kids have dreams, and there's not many kids that get a chance to fulfil their dreams. Ever since I can remember, it's all I've ever wanted to do is play rugby league. The relationships and camaraderie with your teammates, you feel like you're part of something special. He's like having 26 brothers around you at all times. Every rugby league player that takes field striving to be at the best. You've got to perform well week in, week out. Along with that comes a lot of pressure. It's about how you handle that on and off the field. It's pretty intense. It's intense being a Super League player. It consumes you, really, your, your full life. Every little mistake that you make, there's 10, 15, 20,000 people watching you make that mistake. The size of that, the magnitude of that, can hit you pretty hard at times. Just last week, I had um, not the best of games, and um, I just felt absolutely terrible. You're depressed, you're upset, you're angry, you're hurt, so you don't sleep. It's impossible to sleep after you've played. You just tend to relive each play that you did wrong, you know, every tackle, every kick, every pass. People in the town would, would class you a failure on the basis of one week's game. I think driving home on a Friday night sometimes certainly sets the tone for the weekend and can be a bit of a lonely place at times. It's hard to be upset and despondent and then all of a sudden be happy in your personal life, so it, it definitely does spill over and then and my wife probably feels the brunt of it more than anyone else. They're dealing with um, a lot of um, emotion too and we give them like a lot of hard time too. I think if you've got troubles at home, they're showing the work that you're doing. I think it's the same in any job, really. I had some family troubles leading into a big game once, and those family troubles sort of followed me. I knew then that my head wasn't in the game. It's the same with people that go to work. They'll have their own problems at home, and everyone's got problems. Even though people see the highs of rugby, the lifting the trophies, the smiles, the scoring the tries, the tapping each other on the back, there's also kind of um, a lonely place in rugby. You can be injured for a long stretch of time. I had an operation on my spine and they said if the operation don't work um, that my career's gone basically. I was in a, in a tough place then for, for a while. Two years ago I had a, quite a serious neck operation where I was led to believe that I wouldn't play again. You doubt whether you can get back from it for one and then you got to get back into a collision sport as well. When you are injured and you're out there and you see the team training you just don't feel part of it. It's a dark place when you get injured and you're out there for a long time. We're here for not, not a long time really, you know, comparing that to another job or, you know, somebody maybe a plumber or a builder. When you come to the end of the career you realise, well I'm, you know, mid-30s, early 30s now and a lot of people's lives are beginning, where actually yours is ending and it needs to begin again. And you need to escape at times and for me having a hobby which was surfing allowed me to escape and have something else that I could cling to and look forward to. It's a macho sport, it's played by the majority of alpha male type blokes. You know, when you hurt on the field, you don't show it. You know, when you get injured, you get back up and get in the line. It is a bit of a macho sport, if you like, and, and people probably do feel a bit hesitant to talk about personal issues within the group. Probably talking about their emotions and talking about the feelings is, is not a strength. You know, really isn't a strength of the guys in our sport. I'd be very disappointed if I had a teammate that didn't think he could come up to me and ask me for help. I think it's important for the whole group to look out for some of these things and be really sensitive towards it and offer an ear or a chance for them to get some of the things off the chest. There's definitely a lot of players that are physically strong, but mentally they're not. If you're not right upstairs, if you've not got your focus, then it doesn't matter what you've got physically. In any walk of life, I'd say you need to have a strong mentality, otherwise problems that you have are just going to compound and you're going to struggle regardless of what you do. It's the difference between winning and losing is often the mind. Mentally you need to be as fit, if not fitter, than the rest of your body. Your body achieves what your mind believes, doesn't it? If you've got any kind of problems, it's important that you get it off your chest. Try and break that culture in the game that, that says, you know what, we, you know, we, we can be weak, you know, you can discuss weakness. Probably more brave to actually confront someone and tell them you've got a problem than it is to just hide in the background and not show it. I've done it in the past, you bottle things up and, and then they, they sort of tend to grow inside and then become a bigger problem. I think everyone needs to get your emotions out, whether it's good or bad. Sometimes you need to be told um, everything's going to be okay. Speak to people about how you're feeling. Talk about it to players who you're close with or someone at the club or even someone at home. Whatever line of work you're in, I don't think there's a stigma attached at all. You know, it's certainly true that you talk through some of your problems, you can often ease a little bit and find new ways of dealing with things.
state of mind, what's yours? <laughs>